Do you struggle to get sleep? In this video, we're gonna to look to find a food fix for better sleep. We want to find out how food affects your sleep, which foods to avoid and what you should be eating, as well as lots of other juicy bits of useful information related to good food and good sleep. Health Explorer Neil Fellows here to get healthy and fit and stay healthy and fit and do it in a way that's unique and natural to you, please subscribe and hit the bell. I've struggled with sleep on and off and food has certainly affected my sleep in the past. Wrong foods have kept me awake at night. Too much food has kept me awake at night. No food has kept me awake at night. Honestly, at times I felt like I just couldn't win. That's why I wanted to find a food fix for better sleep. Sleep is really important for the body in so many ways. And if you're not sleeping right now, please don't give up. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to award-winning nutritionist, Trish Tucker May. So Trish, today we wanna to talk about um, a food fix for better sleep. Let's start off with the, the obvious question. Can food really affect your sleep? Massively, absolutely. And I've seen it in clinic and I see it in the gut healing program that, you know, when you change how you eat mm. and you change what you eat, then slowly but surely you have that effect on the circadian rhythm and you've got to think about sleep as being a 24-hour cycle it's not just that time when you're asleep because mm. you know the, the the hormones that are needed for sleep serotonin melatonin they're interrupted by blood sugars insulin the thyroid cortisol so when we think about sleep as a 24 hour cycle and we change what we eat, then we can have this big effect on that cycle. Amazing. So if we, um, if we want to sleep better, what kind of food should we avoid eating? Okay. So listeners, look, if you've been struggling with sleep for years and you regularly eat a lot of carbohydrates, so a lot of refined sugars, pasta, cakes, pastries, mm. biscuits. Um, and if you have caffeine is an obvious one. But caffeine plays a lot of, it, you know, it really has an impact on the blood sugars. If you have alcohol, that is going to impact the blood sugar. Yeah. And if you have fizzy drinks, all of these things play havoc with blood sugar. Mm. Now, <clears throat> pardon me, when you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning, that's a good indication that your blood sugar is out of balance. So if you're starting your day with something carbohydrate and sugar processed, mm. like classic is cereal, has a lot of sugar in it, it's a processed carbohydrate. Then you're going on to lunch and you're having a sandwich or and then maybe a coffee and maybe a bit of cake in the afternoon or when you have that dip of energy between three and five and you go for the biscuits or the cakes. Again, blood sugar, up and down, up and down. And then you have dinner and then maybe you think, oh, I might have some pudding and then I'll have a glass of wine and, you know, and on it goes. And what happens in the middle of the night if you're waking up regularly, you have this change in blood sugar. So if you are regularly consuming high-carbohydrate diet, high-sugar diet, high refined, uh, you know, beige foods, pastas, biscuits, cakes, that sort of thing, wheats and grains, and you're throwing in alcohol, then all of those will interrupt the blood sugar, which will interrupt that 24-hour sleep cycle. Okay. So what kind of foods then should we eat? Okay. So I've got a bit of a list. Um, cool. Protein and fat is very important. Now, there is an amazing, amazing ingredients in protein that are the precursors, which means they help you produce those natural hormones that are important for sleep. So we need protein and we need good fats early in the day. So, for example, if you started your breakfast with fat and protein, like good healthy fats, uh, some oily fish, some coconut, um, a chia pudding, a nice uh, healthy smoothie with some hemp seeds. You know, it doesn't have to be think, you don't have to think bacon and eggs, although that's, you know, that can be a good source of protein. But if you started your day with 
a poached egg and avocado, you've got good fat, good protein, then Mm. that sets that circadian rhythm in motion for all the precursors to serotonin and melatonin later in the day because you need those proteins in order to produce those hormones. Yeah, Fat and protein also helps with that, help keeps cortisol level, right? So you want cortisol to keep you awake when you're meant to be awake and keep you energised when you're meant to be energised. Mm. But you don't want cortisol going on in the middle of the night and there's a delicate link between insulin and cortisol Okay. And managing those cortisol levels so you've got them nice and even during the day, keeping you awake and energised throughout the whole day, not having that dip between three and five in the afternoon where you just want to go and have a long sleep. But then tapering off in the evening mm. and then you have this serotonin and melatonin coming in to make you feel sleepy and help you have a good night's sleep. So some of the foods that can are really good for that, um, for example, maintaining a healthy blood sugar, cinnamon, is great so you could have half a teaspoon of cinnamon uh in a smoothie in the morning very good for maintaining blood sugars very good for that 24 hour cycle definitely don't skip meals because you know having three good meals a day can help manage the blood sugars of course if you're exercising as well is very important but you're looking for foods that are high in magnesium um and cinnamon very very good so some of those foods like for example chamomile great natural sleep inducer mild tranquilizer very good for initiating sleep so roman chamomile very good or chamomile tea very good in the evening to help you unwind and relax pistachios you know they're not only tasty but they're a jackpot for sleep they're they're jam-packed with uh, magnesium and potassium, um, protein, vitamin B6, and all of those are very important for the production of serotonin and the production of melatonin. Uh, and, you know, having having those, a, ha- a small handful of pistachios after your evening meal, not too late, with a warm glass of golden turmeric milk, I'll tell you that recipe in a minute because it's divine, um, can really help with sleep issues. Now, kiwis, kiwi fruits, which we, we do get here in the summertime, are they actually contain serotonin, and that's the brain mm. chemical that helps regulate sleep. So uh, having a kiwi fruit a day is um, high in vitamin C and that carotenoids, so that can also reduce inflammation, and inflammation can impact the sleep. So having a kiwi fruit a day could help. Um, mm. Cherries and tart cherry yeah. juice. Again, they contain high levels of melatonin and they help with that internal clock and they send signals to the body to help you get ready for sleep. So, you know, thinking about a tart cherry juice um, with your evening meal instead of the red wine Mm. could be beneficial. Bananas. Bananas are a powerhouse, magnesium and potassium. Um, That, you know, uh, having a sugar-free banana smoothie after your evening meal instead of cake and custard or ice cream and chocolate or something could be very good for you. Um, They're very, um, you know, they they really help with the potassium. And like Peter Rabbit, do you remember the story with um, lettuce being really soporific for Peter Rabbit? Yeah. Yeah. You know, having your leafy greens in your evening meal, very good. Um, Walnuts. Mm. Walnuts contain um, tryptophan. Now, tryptophan helps produce melatonin and serotonin, those hormones that that help with sleep. Um, So walnuts, having walnuts in the afternoon as a snack could be very good. Pumpkin seeds as well. Did you know like a handful of pumpkin seeds um, can contain 649 milligrams of magnesium? So that can help restore that natural rhythm. Um, And and it's also they're very good for the GABA, which is a neurotransmitter that helps with sleep. Mm. Um, Certainly magnesium deficiencies are very common amongst those that are insomnia. Mm. So, yeah, there's a few. There's a list of a few of my favorite foods to help with sleep. Yeah, nice. Thank you, Trish. I mean, I really appreciate that. I mean, I'm taking away kiwis, walnuts and bananas from, from that list of things that you, you mentioned. I, I always always think as well with banana, I think sometimes people forget how adaptable bananas can actually be because um, one of the things that we do is we, we would actually sometimes just use banana like an ice cream. We would blitz it up earlier on during the day, pop it into the freezer 
And then, you know, when we want to eat something later on that's a little bit sweet, got that kind of ice creamy kind of feel to it, we would we would kind of eat, eat that and maybe put that on top of some other fruit or something like that. Um, so that's one of the things I love to do with, uh, with with bananas. But just in case anyone's interested in in, uh, in taking uh, Trisha upon, um, obviously uh, using uh, bananas, that's just one of the ways that that I do it. So I'm talking with Trish Tucker May. Trish is an award winning um, nutritionist. We're talking about food fix for better sleep. Um, if you're enjoying the, uh, the the content Trish is uh, sharing with us here, please do give us a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. Trish, you, you mentioned a little bit about optimal times for certain types of food um, as we were talking there. But I wanted to ask you, is there anything else that you wanted to add to that? Yeah, look, I do find a lot of good results when, you know, especially when we get over the age of 40 and our metabolism slows, slows down and, you know, we're, we're feeling tired. And I do empathise with anyone who has major sleep deprivation because I did mm. have sleep deprivation at the age of 41 with the birth of my second son. Um, and for three years, he was very uncomfortable. He had a twist in his spine and he and he was he didn't sleep really mm. well. And of course, during that time, it was so debilitating. And all I was just could think about was toast and chocolate and anything to get me through as that quick fix for energy. But of mm. course, that was uh, causing all sorts of problems. So if you get up in the middle of the night and you have something to eat, not ideal because you're playing mm. havoc with those blood sugars that has an effect on the thyroid, that has an effect on the cortisol levels, and that has an effect on those hormones that are important for sleep. We do have um, great success if we reduce our eating time. So if we eat between 10 and 7, so 10 a.m. in the morning, 7 p.m. at night, and then we fast for the rest of that time, what happens is that the glycogen that's stored in the liver converts back to glucose during the night to help us maintain healthy blood sugar during the night time. Mm. And so what happens there is that you're more likely to have balanced blood sugars and not be woken up by a, a dip in the blood sugar mm. at 3 a.m. is the classic time, especially if you drink, especially if you have late night snacks, chocolates, things like that. Then that's the first time where the blood sugar really dips back down and you wake up. You know, the liver wakes you up and the liver shouldn't be doing that sort of thing at that, that, that time. Mm. The liver needs that time to rest and repair and rejuvenate. So if we reduce our eating window to between 10 a.m. and 6 or 7 p.m. at night and then allow that fasting time to happen when you're asleep, then you're more likely to have balanced blood sugars and you're more likely to stay asleep. Mm. So that's worth trying. Yeah, it's fascinating how the body works. I, I'm always amazed when I, I speak to someone like yourself about the, the kind of the internal workings and the, the, the patterns of the body and what it needs. It's, it's, a, it's a real piece of machinery, isn't it? Um, Trish, what I wanted to ask you is, what does it mean if we wake up hungry at night? You've talked about a, a couple of little pieces, I think, as we've gone along here, but is there more you can tell us on that? Yeah, look, I think the, the, the wake up between 1 and 3 a.m., that is the liver, and that is the, you know, the, the liver's being, you know, too active at that time and it's trying to metabolise things that it may find difficult to digest, like mm. sugars and alcohol particularly. And if you're a regular drinker, you will know that that feeling of waking up at between 1 and 3 a.m. with a bit of a panic and a dry mm. mouth, that sort of thing, um, you know, that's telling you that the liver needs support. And, look, if you... Um, decided to cut out the carbohydrates or reduce reduce the carbohydrates, reduce the amount of sugar, reduce the caffeine, reduce the booze. And then you were still finding that after a few weeks you were still waking up at that time. I would be particularly looking at um, getting hormones checked, finding out have you got cortisol being kicking off in the middle of the night because of stress or, again, poor blood sugars. Um, have you got a problem with the thyroid? Because the, the you know the thyroid will play a big role in, of course, body temperature, but also metabolism and blood sugar. Mm. Are you potentially pre-diabetic? What's going on with the insulin response? And then I'd also consider you know parasites because parasites mm. if they're active in the intestinal tract or if they're active in the liver or the organs, they can be causing you to wake up and you can be feeling hungry 
but it's not you that's feeling hungry. It's these things that are living inside you that are robbing the nutrients that are waking you up. So it could be any number of things. And I think further investigation through stool tests, blood tests, thyroid check, hormone tests are very worthwhile to tell you exactly what's going on. Yeah. It's fascinating. I've, over the years, I've suffered from, uh, from some sort of bad sleep and, uh, and it can really relate to some of the things you're saying in terms of like different, I've woken up at different times of nights over the, over the years as well. Sometimes it's been around midnight, sometimes it's been around two, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's four. And I've, I've always wondered, you know, is there a meaning behind that? So it's actually wonderful to have that explained um, by yourself. So if people are um, waking up at consistent times, do take Trish's advice and, and, you know, consider why that might be happening and look into that. Trish, um, I know that you have a program where you're helping people with their sleep. Tell us, um, do you have a case study uh, of, that you could share with us of somebody who you've helped with um, improve their sleep? Yes, absolutely. And a lot of the people that do the eight-week gut healing hormone balancing program are coming to me because they mm-hmm. have got digestive distress, like they're bloated or they're carrying unwanted weight, they become accidentally overweight and they're feeling really tired all the time. But the big thing is often that they're not sleeping. Mm-hmm. And so when we change the diet, when we look at removing the inflammatory foods, removing gluten, particularly for a lot of people, dairy for some people and then we remove the lifestyle um, contributing factors particularly alcohol and caffeine you know and uh, when we start to balance the blood sugar we start to see a big change so I had a lady in the most recent uh, eight-week program where she came to me and she had She was insomniac for years, you know, really for a good Mm. couple of decades. She said, I don't sleep. I I, I have periods of time where I don't go to bed at all. She's a musician and she had that lifestyle of a Mm. musician, staying up late a lot of the time, being very creative during the night. And when you have that habit building up for decades, you you really do mess with the circadian Mm. rhythm. And I feel for anyone who's a night worker, um, because it really is a challenge to bring that back to a natural rhythm. So yes, over the eight weeks, we found that when we changed the diet, we improved the gut health, we re- we slowly removed those lifestyle factors. So the booze and the, the craving for the sugar and the refined carbohydrates mm. and the processed foods. And she's happy to report this week, actually week six, that the last two weeks she's had the best night's sleep, two consecutive weeks of having a really good night's sleep. So then that has a big impact on the energy. So she's feeling like, yeah, I'm feeling like my old self again. Like I feel, you know, I feel like I've got the energy back that I had in my 20s, which is so nice to hear. And and, and she came to me, her big goals were anxiety. She was really Mm. struggling with anxiety. She was struggling with the sleep and she was struggling with the energy. So by week six, she's sleeping well. She's not feeling anxious anymore because she's not having the booze, the coffee and the cake and the biscuits and things. And she's improved the gut. So she's been nourished properly. And, you know, she feels like she's got the energy of a 20 year old. So that's, a, you know, it's, and, and it, it, you know, it often happens like mm. that, that sleep may be a, maybe not be the, one, the number one goal that they come in with because they're focused on gut health and thinking, mm. oh, I don't want the bloating and I don't want that accidental weight gain. But the sleep can be a secondary goal, but it's a big one. It's a one. It's one that we really need to start with because when you when you're struggling with the sleep, you don't have that energy, and then you don't have that yeah. motivation to make other changes in your life. You certainly mm-hmm. don't feel like exercising. You don't feel like you know um, fasting. You, you just feel like oh, I'm so hungry. I've just got to eat. I'm so tired. You mm-hmm. know. So it's that uh, that spiral effect that we try and unwind and get people moving in the right direction. So yeah, it's good. Good to get those results. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Trish, because um, I, I do what I do because I love the stories that, that you tell, um, you know, when, when yourself and all of the other people that I interview and all the people um, involved with Total Wellness Club as well, all of the, the fantastic um, therapists, wellness providers, et cetera, that uh, they're involved with us. You know, when we, we 
hear reviews or we hear stories like this for me that's the reason for doing it um you know i'm not an expert in in health and wellness you are and it's just fantastic just to hear that you know people are changing their lives you know just um you know we're talking about sleep here but when you look at the effects that's had on that lady's life isn't that amazing thank you for sharing that Trish, I um, always like to uh, leave with a challenge. Um, so from something that you've uh, talked about today, what would be um, a next sort of practical step that people could take away and try just for a week or a day to see if they can uh, improve their sleep? Okay, so here's a good challenge. And, I, and I'll set it for a week. So if, you, if, you're, if you've been struggling with sleep for a couple of decades or even a couple of years, one week is not a long time. Okay, so put it in perspective first and make a commitment to yourself Mm. that you're going to eliminate the foods and the drinks that will interrupt your sleep. Booze is a big one, a massive one. Okay, so if you can go seven days without your couple of glasses of wine at dinner time or five o'clock or when you have them, take that out. Take a look at your refined carbohydrates. So look at the wheats, the cakes, the biscuits, the pastries, the pastas. All right, so if you can do a week without those, and make sure you're drinking plenty of water. And for one week, log what you're eating and how well you're sleeping. Okay, so when you're taking out those foods, you're going to want to you know, put in some good foods. Hmm. The best way is to your first meal of the day must have protein and fat. So even if you're vegan, having chia pudding, coconut oil, coconut meal, coconut fat, very good. Having a smoothie that has hemp seeds or hemp oil in it or having a poached egg and you know if you're not vegan having a poached egg or some oily fish or some vegetables or bone broth for breakfast is going to set you up for not feeling so hungry and not craving the sugars so so badly because it's usually about by day three you make that shift where you're not you're not craving the sugars in the same way and you're not craving the alcohol in the same way so set yourself a week Eliminate the the things that are causing the problem, the carbs, the refined carbohydrates, the sugars and the alcohol. And, you know, if you have caffeine, just have like a black coffee mid-morning, that should be okay. That doesn't interrupt the circadian rhythm so much. But don't have coffee after 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And then during that time, track your sleep. You know, if you wake up, just if you can subtly... Now, turning a light on, you know, really tune into what time it is and, and keep a diary. Now, wonderful modern inventions like the Fitbit can tell you exactly how long you've slept for and when it was mm. deep sleep and when it was light sleep and that sort of thing. Amazing that you can have this information on your wrist. And I, and I encourage you to try this recipe. It's a turmeric milk recipe and it is so good for restlessness, poor digestion, bloating, stomach pain and gas and brain fog and poor circulation, but it's also amazing for sleep. Let's try this. Half a teaspoon of powdered turmeric, a couple of turns of the pepper grinder, must have the black pepper, and use a milk of your choice. I like it with oat milk or rice milk or coconut milk. If you're a dairy person, you can have it with full fat milk and stir that in. And you could do um, a couple of slices of ginger teaspoon of honey or grate some ginger into it and bring this to a you know a gentle warm simmer so you want it at about 60 70 degrees you don't want to burn the milk and enjoy that after your evening meal and you know if you're looking at that eating window between 10 and 7 and have your turmeric milk after that and see the difference see if you notice any difference in a week because i guarantee you will have a subtle shift in your blood sugars. You'll have a subtle shift in that ability to produce serotonin and melatonin. And you'll have this shift in that 24-hour sleep cycle. And you may well find that you're not waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning. You may well find that you're waking up more energised, less brain fog. And then that may set you on a path of like, okay, I'm going to do this now for 30 days. Mm. See how you go. Because there's magic in that, you know, the 30-day period, the 42-day period, when you tend to break those habits, Mm. then you start to feel that new feeling of energy and that new feeling of like, oh, 
that's what it feels like to sleep all night long and wake up energized and brighter. Yeah. And then you've got motivation to make further changes. But yeah, start with one week and, and let us know how you go. Yeah, Trish, that's, that's amazing. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, always fascinating to uh, to share some time with you. Each week, I ask experts to leave us with a challenge. It's just an idea. It's something that we can try. If we like it, we can stick with it. But it, if the idea doesn't work for you, you can always throw it out and just keep looking and find something that works for you. I'm going to be taking this week's challenge. You can see my findings from this challenge in our challenge roundup video, which is a monthly summary covering all of the challenges our experts have shared. To get that video and all of our latest health and wellness uploads, including interviews and reviews, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified whenever we post. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please share it with them too. If you want to get proactive with your health, Total Wellness Club are developing health quests over at questly.life. Join while we're developing the site and get access to health quests that immediately personalize your health. You'll get to identify which of 10 critical health categories need your attention. You'll be able to track your progress and you'll be able to help us develop the platform too. I'll put a link in the description and I'll see you in the next video.